<laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Zams, and welcome back to another reaction video. This video was recommended to me by Danielle. It's called The Case. Uh, it's called The Sinister Case of the Harrison Family. So you know I'm about to be pausing, stopping, and talking through the whole thing. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Rapunzel Zams, and welcome to the grossness. It's not nice. I skipped ahead. He was doing a lot of like talking and stuff that didn't mean, like apply. Bill to me, so Harrison was married to Bridget, that. and they lived at Tree Six Tree Five in Leafy Pitch Pine Crescent, Mississauga. They lived there for almost four decades. It was a big old house, and where the Harrisons would host large family gatherings. They were the gregarious type. What does that mean, gregarious? Is that like Bill the had nice met Bridget dinners? in the sixties. They fell in love at a performing arts theater. They dated Shred the 60s and married in 1969. Damn. Bill worked in management, Bridget in education. He like Bill a and brother. Bridget were unable to have kids naturally, and so in 1973, they adopted Caleb at six months old. Aww. They were a very happy family by all accounts. Caleb could be a handful, but he was loved. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm kind of scared to adopt kids. After watching that movie called The Orphan, bro, I've been scared by like adopting kids. Every time people talk about adopting kids, I think of that movie, bro. That's some scary stuff. If you haven't seen that movie, go check it out. Bridget would go toe to toe with him, while Bill was a cool and calm presence in he the looked, house. He looked chill. He had the afro, he was like, free, shut After up. school, Caleb would go on to work in shipping and receiving. And it was at a warehouse in the year 2000, if you can believe it, that he would meet his future wife, Melissa Merritt. Melissa was 19. She worked behind a desk at the warehouse and grew up surrounded by law enforcement. Okay. Mm, sure hope she doesn't go on to do something that would, you know, embarrass her dad and her brother, who were both cops. Because, you know, that'd, that'd really be a shame. So, Caleb and Melissa, they hit it off, you know, right off the bat. And within a few months, they were ready to settle down now, lads, and start cranking up the old family production line. And believe it or not, they did. In 2003, they were married with children living in Georgetown, not far from the Harrison home. Bill and Bridget became doting grandparents to the growing family. However, like all good stories... Yep, come to an end. Well, uh, this is where the bad story begins. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Buckle your seatbelt, it's about to The relationship get became strained and fractured. You know, Caleb, maybe he liked a few too many sups. Money was always an issue. Melissa was a drama queen, and this continued to, you know, escalate and escalate until the year 2005 came along, and, well, enough is enough. And they took the relationship out and put one in the back of the head. Wait, what? Caleb was devastated, especially by the idea that he might not be around his children every day. He had unanswered questions as an adopted child, and so wanted to make sure he was always with his own children. He would move back in with his mom and dad, and end up sharing custody with Melissa. And the, you know, the stress of the breakdown of his marriage would just make him even thirstier, so... Wow, bro. That ended in tragedy when one night he drove home drunk from the pub in 2005 and plowed straight into a taxi. Yeah, he was fine. The taxi driver died. didn't survive and four passengers were injured. Why, bro? Can somebody let me know down in the comment section? Is it just like since they're drunk, their body is like loose so it doesn't tighten up during the crash? Or is this just like the, the luck of the draw? Like, what is this? Like, why is it every time? Like, it would be great for no injuries at all. You know, I'm not saying DUI drivers should suffer injury, but why is it always the DUI driver either suffer minor injuries, no injuries at all, and then the people that they hit either die or in critical condition? It's crazy, bro. The driver from DUI could literally fly out the windshield and then get up and walk away and nothing happened but the other people can just you know smack it and it's, it's gone like I'm I'm puzzled by this Caleb himself was seriously injured and released on bail released on bail now over the next few weeks Melissa would report to the police that she was just having a you know home invasion and that she'd even been attacked in her own backyard Melissa pointed the finger at Caleb. A Caleb that was in crutches, you know, from the drunk driving incident, so he could barely walk. She would continue to tell the police of more and more home invasions, you know, it kept happening, Jesus. You know, to the point where a cop would later say he was 100% sure she was just inventing them. Mm -mm. Somebody was in that house. If you think Regardless, in your time house, rolled ever onward. 
Caleb and Melissa got 50-50 custody. Bill and Bridget were delighted and heavily involved in their grandkids' lives, and Melissa would eventually divorce and marry a man named Christopher Fattore, a bouncer, handyman, and Hooters manager. His YouTube username was 1021 Big Daddy. Wasn't he Melissa master? and Christopher would have four kids over the next few years. I could have sworn I seen him on Ink Master. Or am I tripping? He might look he looked very similar to somebody that I've seen on. On April 16, 2009, Bridget was returning home late from work, arriving back around 9 in the PM. The house was dark when she arrived. Caleb at the time was serving an 18 month sentence for the drunk driving. Inside, you know, all the lights were off, and she found dinner set up as if Bill was expecting her at any moment. Hmm. And so, not being able to find Bill. Well, she did find him in the bathroom. He wasn't breathing, and Bridget called 911. What? Uh, my husband, I just came home from work and I found him collapsed on the bathroom floor. Okay, is your husband away? No, he's not. I can't move him. He's wedged in against the wall between the toilet and the door and everything. Just stay on the line, man. Yeah, I can't move him. He's not breathing. Okay. Is this like a little oh thing God. of like, get out? Like get the out paramedics movie? arrived, but there was nothing they could do. Bridget had some uh, <clears throat> thoughts about the scene. Well, why was the house dark? The lights were all off. The bathroom door, it was locked. She had the jimmy the door open. The pathologist noticed some abrasions on Bill's neck. Thin red marks across his throat. A bruise on his head. Mm -hmm. A fractured sternum. In the end, it was reported as a natural death. They, they wrote down, basically, you know, uh, his heart said, fuck it, I'm out, and was done. His heart said, freak it, I'm done, but he had ligature abrasions and stuff on the back of his head and his neck. Bro, he was killed. Nah, bro, you know what it is? My brain is starting to piece it all up together. He said they had a family of law enforcement, bro. The law enforcement people got to be hiding or sweeping something under the rug because there's no way you have all those forensic evidence around your neck and your head and it says you died of natural causes, bro. Unless his heart jumped out of his throat and it started beating him up and it went back inside his body, it is, that's not happening. Even though they found during the autopsy nothing wrong with his heart at all. Now, some weird things there, but I guess, you know, as weird as it was, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But there's no excuses for what follows. <clears throat> See, this is where the uh, weirdness begins, and you'll probably have a pretty incredulous face on pretty soon. Let me see that shocked face. When a year later, the same thing happened again. So they're doing it in intervals. So On the 21st of time. April, 2010, Bridget's eight-year-old grandson walked into the house from school and found Bridget lying at the bottom of the stairs. He ran to the next door neighbor and paramedics would, once again, say there was nothing to be done. Caleb rushed home from work. He had been out of prison for a few months now, released early for good behavior. At first, it looked like, uh, well, what it looked like. You know, she had fallen down the stairs and broken her neck. However, red flags are waving once again. She wasn't lying like she had fallen down the stairs. Like, she was lying on her back with her head on her arm, like, on the stairs. She had bruising on her neck. She had injuries unexplainable. And this was ruled a suspicious death. However, this too was flawed when the Homicide Bureau didn't uh, take the case, you know, too seriously. This would be shocking, to say the least, when you look at, you know, what was yeah. going on at the time of Bridget's death. In the years leading up to Bridget's death, and Bill's the year before, Melissa, crazy Melissa, was intensifying her attacks and claims against Caleb. She was not happy the judge ruled for a 50-50 custody split. Mm. She made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 unsubstantiated claims that either Caleb or Bill or Bridget had beaten the children. So what I'm thinking is maybe she's trying to get rid of the people so that when she kills this dude or tries to kill this dude that she gets 100% custody, right? So say if he would have died, then they probably would have went to the court and his parents or wherever it was, Bridget and them probably would have got some kind of access to the kid as well. So maybe she's kind of sitting hits out on these people so that she can gain full custody of their child and move on with her life. But I don't know, man, I've seen so many documentaries and stuff, you'll be crazy with people. Uh, tend to do when they want to get their way. Upon investigating, the police found these claims to be complete bullshit. And not only that, they found that Melissa had been coaching, had been coaching the kids to say things. 
I've seen she would prevent the Harrisons from too. seeing the children all the time. And when Caleb went away in 2009 to serve a prison sentence for that drunk driving incident, Bill and Bridget were essentially then given his share of the custody. That just ramped up Melissa's determination. See, this time Melissa and Chris ran away with the kids. They did this the day Bill died. Bridget, with Caleb still in prison, she gained temporary sole custody of the children, which led police to issue an arrest warrant for Melissa. Melissa and Chris were then on the run with the children she was supposed to share with the Harrisons and her own kids. Mm-mm-mm. Suspicable. Over the span of seven and a half months, they went to Calgary, then Nova Scotia, where Melissa was arrested. Granny Bridget would then get sole custody of the kids, you know, till Caleb got out of got out of prison, and Melissa would be essentially put on house arrest and not allowed to have like unauthorized, you know, access to the kids. The hearing, you know, for that abduction case against Melissa, uh, it was scheduled for the 22nd of April, 2010. Guess who was going to speak at that hearing? Melissa. Bridget, who oh, Bridget. was found at the bottom of the stairs the day before. <clears throat> Melissa got real lucky, didn't she? The family yeah. that had, you know, um, questions after Bill's death. Uh, they now had a hell of a lot more. During the investigation, laughable investigation into Bridget's death, Caleb told the police, I would ask where Melissa and Chris were. Just so you know, Caleb, uh... We use this room for the purpose of taking statements from uh, uh, anybody we need to take a statement from. Sure. So the, there's a video camera here, so everything that we say is being recorded. Okay. just want to say very sorry for your loss. Uh, I understand it's a hard thing for you to have to, there's other things you'd rather be doing. There was a mark on your mom's chin. Yeah, like this. Like a bruise or something? Yeah. Yeah. And the coroner's just not sure. Yeah, I talked to him about yeah, that. About when or because I How said it wasn't like that in the morning, like when she yeah. dropped me off. Now, it's important to note that in both deaths, uh, Bill's and Bridges, there was no signs of like a disturbance, no signs of a fight, no signs of forced entry. But mm. they would say, you know, Caleb would say they often left the doors unlocked. They lived in a very safe neighborhood. But then again, even if you do live in a safe neighborhood, if you were to, somebody were to walk in and you know them and there wasn't a struggle, it had to be somebody that you trusted, bro. Nine times out of 10, if there's no broken glass, there's no, you know, broken door handles or anything like that, anything that hasn't been moved, bro, it was somebody that you trusted enough to let inside your house, which has to be Melissa or Melissa convinced Chris or whoever is or Caleb, wherever his name was, to kind of um, go over and handle the business for to protect the kids, you know? You should probably say something like, well, you can't protect the kids and I can't be with you or something, you know, because I'm kind of like some manipulated uh, behavior. I'm stressed out, you know, since my kids were taken from me and my doctor's like, you need to take it easy. Like, Look at the fingers. It'll feel like I have ulcers now that I'm on medication oh, for. Yeah, yeah. Ask her well, again. She's yeah, fidgety so, as hell. Because I'm just always worrying and I don't see them and I'm stressed out about everything that's going on. And, you know, he's like, you really, you'll get sick, like, from the stress. It'll just eat away at your body and you'll just shut down. Mm -hmm. Me being different, I'm, you know. 30-year-old woman compared to a 63-year-old woman, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, you know, like, when I think thought about it, I was like, that's really weird, mm -hmm. like, that that close of a time span, mm. you know? Yeah. But then sometimes, like, then I'm thinking, well, maybe the one-year anniversary, you get upset again, you feel like you go through that remorse again. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Very repetitive. As to, like, you know, when I don't know anything that would have happened to her, I don't, I've got... Yeah you know, my worries about things, but... And what would those worries be? Well, not so much worries, just... Um, when I was with Caleb, you know, I'm not... I don't want to be, like, you know... I've already been told by Detective Amoroso that fingers are being pointed, and I'm not in any way pointing fingers, because yeah. that's not why I'm here. But when I was with Caleb, he didn't have a good relationship with his mom. Okay. And I'm not saying that's enough to do something to her, but he didn't have a great relationship with his mom. They had, you know, they would argue a lot. I know that they had a rough, you know growing up stage where they wouldn't get along. I don't know, like, and again, I don't know how she died. I don't know what she looked like. I don't know if she was assaulted. I don't know if she looked for, I don't know anything about that. So I don't want to be making any assumptions that he beat the hell out of her and she died because I don't know, like, I don't know what she looked like. You know, all like if you know, her face was all bashed in, then maybe it would be a little bit more stronger of a thought. Melissa was happy to 
nudge, nudge, wink, wink away at yeah. Caleb. Like I said, I'm not pointing fingers at him. I wonder if. I'm not in any way pointing fingers. He beat the hell out of her and she died. Why did you go directly to beating? She didn't say shot or anything. Like, why did you go straight to assault, right? When she had abrasions and stuff and bruises and stuff that cleared or was seemed to be obvious that she was abused or, you know, beaten or assaulted, right? And then she's like, oh, I don't know what happened to her. Maybe it was just the stress that was just weighing her down and she, you know, fell down the stairs or it killed her, you know, the stress killed her. And then she's like feeling sorry, right? She's like, oh no. And then she kind of like slowly starts to direct all the attention to Caleb and away from her, like all the attention is, you know, over on Caleb and stuff. So I don't know, man. It's, it's, but and then again, my detective radar could be all m malfunctioning and messed up. But that's just me. I, I don't know. I don't get a good bite from her. Either she did it or she knows somebody that did it, but she knows something. The fact that you have children, you still went through with it, bro. You don't care about your kids. Because if you did, you'd have just went about it the right way. If you cared, you wouldn't have went and killed them. You wouldn't have kept killing, bro. No, bro. No, there is no mercy, bro. You're a killer. I'm very sorry for what I did. No, you're not. You talked about Caleb. We've talked about Bridget. Yes. I gotta ask about Bill. Bill, I know nothing about Bill. Okay. I will say that from the bottom of my heart. Bill, out of the three of them, was the nicest man out of the family. I don't believe that. He said Melissa had nothing to do with either murder, only finding out later. He did it, obviously, for custody. A few days Later, while at Halifax Airport, uh, on their way, you know, to be transported back to Ontario, Chris and Melissa were put in the same room, and they started yapping away. Unbeknownst to them, there was a wire, a recording device in the room. What'd you do? What'd you do? See? Bro, I need to be a detective, bro. I need to be a detective. I'm good, bro. I'm telling it's you. It's like a bad movie script. It's my call, Murder man. charges tonight in the case of a Mississauga mother and son who died years apart in their own home. Now, the son's ex-wife and her new common-law husband stand accused of those murders. Both deaths happened inside this home here at 3635 Pitch Pine Crescent. And the case took an even more sinister turn today. <laughs> because while Caleb Harrison's death last summer was quickly deemed a homicide, his mother Bridget's death in 2010 was only considered suspicious until now. They've annihilated an entire family. Man, what? The whole bloodline, bruh. Talking about she had nothing Chris to do and with Melissa it. were charged with the murders of Caleb and Bridget, not with Bill. At that time, that is. Okay. He'd been cremated, so there was nothing to, mm. to reinvestigate. But two years later, the autopsy report would be re examined, and Chris would be charged with second degree murder for Bill's death. There we go. On their laptop, they found such interesting searches as How long does it take to die from choking? How long does it take for a person being strangled to pass out? If a grandparent has legal custody and they die, which of the parents gets the kids? And easy ways to kill and get away with it. They should have Googled harder. In 2018, Christopher Fattori was found guilty of murdering Caleb and Bridget. During the trial, he recanted his confession, said he only spoke to protect his wife. He said he didn't kill Bridget and he only killed Caleb by accident. He only meant to hurt him. That ploy did not go well for him. Nope. But he was found not guilty of murdering Bill. That turned out to be the ghosts inside the house. Melissa Merritt was found guilty of murdering Caleb also. Though she wasn't there for it, the prosecution said, you know, it was, well, it was her plan. Oh, of course it was. A mistrial was declared on her charge in Bridget's death after the jury could not reach a verdict. They both received life sentences in prison. Okay, but parole that's after 25 years. Well, Ken, I can tell you that last week in front of the jury, Melissa Merritt seemed to shed a lot of tears. And indeed, Christopher Fattori, after confessing to the murders to police a few years ago, also shed a lot of tears. That was a confession he later recanted on the stand. But today in front of, or as they were watching, rather, some very tearful victim impact statements, it seemed that not a tear was shed from the prisoner's box. So, uh, police came under the shit after this, the Harrisons were demanding answers as to what kind of investigation they were running. Right. A police review was launched, and as of March 2020, they found... Hmm, 
nothing. Though in August 2020, mm. two officers admitted to neglect of duty in the death of Bridget Harrison. So there. You know, crazy story of an entire family being murdered in nearly the same way over four years. <coughs> Bizarre. Uh, good luck to whoever lives there now. Not, not for a million, this guy. No. Mm -hmm. To end, though, I should say that uh, Melissa and Chris, they ended up divorcing in prison. Boo-hoo, you know. Uh, Melissa, though, she found love again at the Grand Valley uh, Institution for Women. She married a fellow inmate. Chris, getting jelly, he posted this ad on Canadian Inmates Connect. Hey, thanks for checking out my profile. What can I say? Well, you're in prison for killing two people, so uh, kind of hard to get past that, but what an icebreaker. I killed two people. What can I say? I'm an easygoing and down-to-earth guy. Friends and family describe me as fun and caring. Just a big teddy bear. No, they don't, liar. I enjoy drawing and painting, staying fit and working out. But cooking is my heart and home, my favorite way to share and bring family and friends together. Two things you're not going to be able to do for quite some time there, Chris. Football and the outdoors are great passions of mine. Again, Chris, that's off the table. And I love music, especially rock and country. I'm on this site to find someone I can connect with. Someone open-minded. Uh, very open-minded, I imagine. And mature with a light-hearted, youthful side. Kind of angry that he's a Green Bay Packers fan because that's my team. Bro, you can't just go and make a, t a tender Bumble Pin Pal account talking about some... I'm a big teddy bear, bro. No, you're not, bro. You're a killer. Bro, you're a grizzly bear, maybe, bro. You're out there killing people, bro. And then he talks about, I bring the family together. No, bro, you tear the family apart by strangling and beating people until they're dead. Are you crazy? I need somebody that's open-minded to first degree and second degree murder. Man, he had an excuse for everything in the book. I did it to protect my wife. Uh, I did it to protect my kids. I, I did it to protect my family. Bro, shut up. No, you didn't, bro. Stop lying. They gave him, man, they shouldn't even gave him parole, bro. They shouldn't just gave him life, bro. He... And the fact that the police didn't even think it was foul play when two of the same people died in the same house the same exact way. So he had cardiac arrest. Where? They need to uh, investigate into those police officers because remember they said they said Melissa had a history or has a family of law enforcement and they never said they were working for that uh that, in that jurisdiction or, 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 or not. So I'm kind of curious to see because that, clay, that case was super neglected until they're kind of like, okay. There's another one. We got to do something about it because this family has just happened to disappear after or before every court case that comes out. Someone with a great sense of humor who doesn't mind being silly and having fun. And kill hey, ladies, if you're that desperate, what about Cheetos guy, <laughs> Mr. Tummy Tattoo, or Cuddles? Yo, people are well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you as always. Uh, in the next one, which will be real soon. Thank you, Danielle, for recommending me that video. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys thought about it. I think it was pretty crazy. I think, uh, in the beginning of the video, I kind of caught on extremely fast. I, I knew it was pointing towards the kids. I kind of felt weird, like they're having child custody and then custody battles, and the next thing you know, the dad dies, and the mom dies, then then uh, Caleb dies. I'm kind of like, okay, bro. After the dad died, I'm like, okay, that's kind of sus. Then when Bridget dies, I'm like, okay, they're trying to kill them so they can take custody of all the kids, but I don't know. I on pretty quick let me know down in the comment section what you think i think i should become a detective man i really think i should look into that i really like to dig deep and do like uh um, research on stuff like that and i watch a lot of documentaries and stuff and i usually end up either figuring out or learning a lot about them to where I can, i'm able to use that and compare it to other cases which i you guys see all the time i use it either really close or i'm like spot on so, uh, yeah, if you guys have any more recommendations, let me know down in the comment section, man. Hope you guys had a great New Year's. Thank you guys for the 250 subscribers. Hopefully, we can make it to 1,000 or maybe even more this year. I'm looking forward to making more videos. But, again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Ah, ah.